frozen embryo transfer, this is such a brilliant concept because of the fact that to think that we can actually freeze an embryo and then thaw that embryo and transfer it later and still have extremely high success rates. This possibility didn't exist 20, 30 years ago. I'm Dr. Lyndon Chang, a medical director and founder of Hanabusa IVF. I'm also the co-founder of the Asian Egg Bank. Our focus is on minimal stimulation, lower stimulation, uh, diminished ovarian reserve, cases that fail elsewhere. In the past, freezing an embryo meant let's stick the embryo in a freezer, kind of like you're sticking ice cream in a freezer. When you put food in the freezer, it crystallizes. 50% of the embryos used to get damaged and died in the process. About 15 plus years ago, this concept of vitrification, liquid nitrogen freezing of the embryo, placing it in crystalline form so it never creates those ice crystals, uh, now the success rates of embryo transfers have increased 50% survival rate to 99% survival rate. It's an amazing concept. Some of the figures who have created this process, they believe that as long as we keep these embryos frozen, you can keep these embryos frozen indefinitely. The record-setting twins born from embryos frozen 30 years ago. Uh, re recently, you may have heard there were twin babies born from embryos that were frozen 30 years ago. Thriving, very, very healthy. And that's been kind of the record. And that was even with a slow freezing technique, which suggests that you know we should have much, much better rates with the liquid nitrogen techniques that we have, what we call uh, vitrification. Uh, once we have the embryos frozen, obviously there's another, even though many people say that's 90% of your success, there's another step to it, You know, the body, the environment. What do we need to do to make sure that the, the embryo sticks? So typically a couple hours before the transfer occurs, the embryologist will take the embryo out of the liquid nitrogen freezing tank and they will thaw it in a Petri dish and they would observe it in the next few hours to make sure that the embryo is uh, thawed effectively and thriving. Now, obviously the last thing we want to do is put an embryo that has not recovered back into the uterus. So this is what's happening in the laboratory. It's a very passive, there's nothing active. It's not like you are putting a blowtorch on an embryo. This is passively letting that embryo uh, come to room temperature. Uh, the transfer itself, it's basically a combination of a transvaginal ultrasound probe and uh, your typical pap smear, your speculum exam. It should not be necessarily a painful experience, but then again, obviously it's not, you know, pap smears are never the most pleasant experience in the world as well. Now, during this time, our patients, we would like our patients, once again, to be happy, healthy, and relaxed as possible. I often will tell patients coming into the transfer, if they are not feeling healthy, if they are, if they're, they are feeling stressed, whether or not it's physically or emotionally, because the embryo is frozen, they may want to consider canceling the cycle and trying again. I can control the embryo. I can control how it goes in. I cannot control your environment when it comes to the embryo transfer. If you'd like guidance on your fertility journey, contact Hanabusa IVF today.